Hello, how's everyone doing out there? I uh, wanted to shoot a quick video on a topic I've been exploring and uh, I didn't really plan to do this, but I just felt uh, kind of compelled to talk about it. Sitting out here doing my quiet time, slept in this morning, so it's a little late for me, but I uh, was out here talking to God and wanted to share. So uh, before we get into it, do me a favor, drop a comment, uh, let me know that you saw this uh, video, whether you watched it live or you watched the replay, leave me a comment, say hi. And uh, if it's your first time catching a live, let me know you're, where you're watching from. I'd like to um, try to get connected with the new people and hopefully get them connected with others. Um, we're not doing that so much anymore, but something that we we used to do and we, we may get back to. Um, so, how's it going, Alyssa Silvera? So anyway, yeah, I wanted to get into this. I was on a podcast the other day called Iron Disciples Podcast um, with these guys down in Florida and um, really had a good conversation with them. The, the episode was entitled Why Waiting Works. We talked about the book and, you know, the practicality and the, the biblical um, reasons for saving sex for marriage. But we got into this conversation about polygamy, polyg polygyny or polygyny to be exact, which is. Um, polygamy is kind of the broad term, um, of having a plural marriage, but a polygamy is the specific term of a man having more than one wife. Anyway, we got into this topic and, um, it, it's something that I discovered recently, um, some information where I was like anyone else in, in America and any other Western civilization that we've been brought up to believe that. Monogamy is the only relationship structure that's acceptable to God. That's what I was always taught and what I believed. And I've been dug in on that for the last 23 years. I've, uh, I gave my heart to, to God when I, 23 years ago in the year 2000. And I believe that that was, um, you know, the only relationship structure acceptable to God. So I was abstinent for six years, waiting for God to give me a wife, fell off had a bunch of sexual sin from 2006 to 2011. And then I rededicated my life to God. And basically from 2012 until now, I've been single and, and, and abstinent outside of a couple of slip ups. Um, but waiting for God to give me a wife. How's it going? Tanya Owens, Stacy strong. Um, anyway, look, leave me a comment. Let me know that you were here again. If you're just tuning in, leave me a comment, say hi. And, um, and uh, so where I was with all that is I've been dug in on this idea, you know, this belief that 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 was the only relationship structure. And I assumed that God was going to bring me this amazing person sooner or later with enough good behavior. So that really kind of motivated me um, not to sin, in addition to the fact that I just wanted to be obedient to God. I mean, that was that was the most important thing. But I've recently found out that it was never explicitly stated in the Bible that a man couldn't have more than one wife. It was actually a Greco-Roman practice, monogamy was, but they all had mistresses. They all, there was brothels all over Rome, and, and, and all the, and the men had mistresses. It's kind of like what was going on right now, actually. But it was never explicitly stated in the Bible. In fact, the Jews were very polygamous. They, all the greats in the Bible, Moses... Abraham, Caleb, uh, Isaac, I believe, um, Gideon, David, Solomon, they all had multiple lots, right? And what the, 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 the teaching, the, uh, the common belief out there, what's being pushed is that, oh, that was acceptable in the old Testament. God, you know, because of war or whatever, but God, you know, doesn't accept it now. He, he, he doesn't tolerate it anymore. But that was never, it's never in the Bible that it was somehow stopped and somehow became wrong. So, in fact, you know, just to touch on that, what I would challenge people that, that say that is there, name one thing in the Old Testament or any time that was wrought right at one time and then later it, God said it was wrong. It's, it somehow changed over time. Because I don't think God changes. I think he's the same yesterday, today, and forever is what the Bible says. And, and people will say, well, we're under the new covenant and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, but Jesus didn't come to abolish the law. He came to fulfill the law. So, so I don't think that that argument holds up, <clears throat> but 
And let me just preface all this to say, I'm not there. Like, I don't even have a girlfriend, but I'm just learning all this. I'm exploring all this information and I'm processing it and digesting it. And, and it's making me think because for just for example, like I was stuck between two polar beliefs or uh, positions. The first was I was like deathly committed to not have sex before marriage. But on the other side, I was equally committed to not settling. Meaning like I wasn't going to just tap out because I was lonely at times or depressed and just marry someone because I was like, I, 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 number one, I don't want to ever be a cheater again. And number two, I don't want to get divorced. So I was like, I'm going to wait for this girl, this one woman, and either I'll fall madly in love with a girl that I meet and I'll know, or God will tell me, I'll meet somebody and God will say her. I feel like I have pretty good discernment and I would have married her, but neither happened. And I was stuck in the middle of those two things. And at times it was horrible. Like I burned with lust at times. I you know, dealt with loneliness and depression. That's, you know, 18 of 23 years. It wasn't like a short little window. It wasn't a year or six months. It was 18 years of being alone, waiting for this one person that I don't even believe exists anymore. I don't think, I don't think I believe in the whole soulmate thing anymore. I don't. Because there were women over the last 12 years that I lo I liked uh, enough. I, I would even say I loved, I know I loved some of them, but it, it, it wasn't that one like feeling that I guess being in love, maybe, I don't know, maybe that's what I was looking for. Maybe I didn't give myself a chance to get there with, with these women because God wasn't giving me peace about them. Or I guess I didn't feel so strongly that I, I wouldn't have felt like on some level I should have waited a little bit longer you know, that there was someone better out, you know, maybe not better for me out there, or maybe would have put me in a position where I wouldn't have felt like a strong desire to look over my shoulder, which is what always happened to me in previous relationships, wondering if I could be happier with someone else. In addition to the fact that God just never gave me peace about anybody. But some of these women if I had believed in polygamy and, and know, known that it was acceptable to God, I believe that some, some of these women may probably would have married me under those uh, circumstances. <clears throat> I don't know if they would have. I didn't bring it up. I didn't know about this information. But they went on, and I've watched some of their lives since then, cause I, and they went on to like date and shack up with different guys that were not godly, that took them away from church, that just slept with them and cheated on them and different situations. And I feel like had I known this and, and actually done this, it would have been better off for them because they would have at least been in a relationship with a good Christian guy that could have been a priest of their home and led them. Instead, they went out and dated some scumbag or, you know, that cheated on them or just some guy that was maybe a good guy, but he didn't know God. And that next thing you know, they're not coming to church and they're, they have a baby out of wedlock and their baby's being raised in a, a home where they're not, they're getting no foundation laid for them as far as Christianity goes. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I think it would, it would have been better for them and it would have been better for me because I know what I went through. And most men, when I say most 999 out of a thousand men will not go through what I went through, what they'll do it, because they'll just fornicate. They'll just they'll just go out and have sex with different women because they're like, eh, well, she, you know, I'm not ready to marry her, but I'm lonely and I'm horny or, you know, whatever. And they'll just, they'll just have sex with different girls. And that's exactly kind of where we're at now. So most men won't go through that. They'll just fornicate or they'll marry somebody that they feel that they like enough. And then they'll cheat. That's exactly what will happen. <clears throat> they'll have a side chick. I read something in Rational Mail recently, one of the red pill books um, by Rollo Tomasi, one of the probably the biggest red pill books in the manosphere. And he said in this book that most women will rather have a, a strong, godly, alpha man 
that they have to share rather than having like a week or beta man to themselves. And I think that that's a hundred percent true. And I know women won't want to hear it. Don't want to hear this. And I'm going to lose a lot of followers by even talking about this. I'm sure. But I, I, I don't really, you know, I, I, I care, but I don't care. Meaning like, I don't want to, I don't want to offend anybody, but I never was concerned about what people thought about anything that I did. I was only concerned about being obedient to God and being in the will of God. So that's, that's the journey I'm on. That's what I'm exploring now is I just want to be obedient to God. Is, is this acceptable or not? Is it sin or not? <clears throat> but where was I going with that? What was the last thing I said? <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Oh, when you look at these Facebook groups, are we dating the same man, Baltimore? 10,000 members in it, women, whatever it is. Are we dating the same man, DC? Are we dating the same man, every city across the country? Thousands of women in these Facebook groups trying to catch the men that they're dating to find out if they're, who, if they're sleeping with other girls. So that right there proves to you that what, I'm, that what this guy says is true. <clears throat> that most women would rather have a strong man that they're sharing versus having a weak man to themselves. Okay, and, and I did a video about this probably, I think about a year ago, and it's 80% of the women are sleeping with 20% of the men right now. So you got the top alpha men, the strong, good looking, rich, whatever men, 20, the top 20% are sleeping with 80% of the women. So that proves to you that what I'm saying is true. Women are out, they're already in polygamous relationships. The reason that I believe that God allowed polygamy was because it cleans up some of the, the mess, the cesspool. Because think about how it is now with enforced monogamy. Men are just deceptive. They lie. They're out juggling these girls. All these girls in the group are trying to catch these guys, many of which are sleeping with multiple of them. It has to be true in order for this 80-20 uh, stat to be fact, <clears throat> which it is. And, but they're lying about it. They're just, you know, and they have no responsibility for those women. They're just sleeping with them and printing their DNA on those women and passing them on to the next guy. And it's a cesspool. And I'm so I'm not advocating. I'm not even advocating this yet. I'm just exploring and I'm processing the ideas and I'm wrestling with it. Like, and I think that. <clears throat> so what I was going to say is it, I'm not advocating being a whoremonger because that's not it at all. You have to marry the person first in order that marry that woman in order to consummate the marriage and have sex with her. And then you got to take care of her. You're responsible for her. Now I think about what I, what I did when I was in my you know thirties, when I was backslidden and I had sometimes multiple girls that I was sleeping with at the same time. And some of them knew about each other and they didn't care. They didn't, not that they didn't care. They cared, but they, they didn't leave me because of it. I pushed them away because I was like, I can't marry you and I wouldn't want to waste any more of your time. Go find somebody now while you're still, you know, your sexual market value is still high and you can go get land a good husband. And many of them did. But I believe some of those women would have married me under these circumstances. They were already having sex with me. And I wasn't, there was, and there was no covenant involved. There was not even really a commitment involved. So I believe that I, and I guess when this is kind of where I'm, and I've had a lot of thoughts on this, so I'm, I'm a little all over the place, but when I look at, okay, you look at somebody like Andrew Tate, right? He's this figure now that a lot of young guys are looking up to him, wanting to be him, wanting to emulate his life now. And he is not giving a great message to young men, right? Because he's basically got like, go out have sex with all these different girls, get you know, many of them pregnant. Um, I don't know what his beliefs are as far as marriage and commitment, because that's, that's the, the difference. It's not acceptable to God to fornicate. And now this is something else. Martin Luther, Martin Luther, you got to believe that he had a pretty good handle on scripture, right? He, you got to believe he's the one that nailed the, you know, the, the reformation. He was responsible for that. Nailed the things on the, on the, the door of the Catholic church. Martin Luther said that there's no scriptural evidence that polygyny 
is not acceptable to God. He said, there's no uh, biblical support that a man can't take multiple wives if his conscience is clear about it. And he said, it's, a, it's better than fornication and it's better than divorce, which is exactly what you have right now. Under enforced monogamy, we've got a 56% divorce rate. 56. Like why the F would any man want to get married? I got a 56% chance of failure. And if I fail, I get wrecked in divorce courts. So like, we have to change the conversation, I believe. Because when men look at someone like Andrew Tate, they see this lifestyle and the, and the alternative to that, the Christian alternative to that is so fucking far away, excuse my language. It's so fucking far away from that, that they just abandon the whole thing. And they just go out and, you know, become a whore and sleep with a bunch of women. I look at like this guy, Justin Waller, who's starting to pop up now on some of the podcasts. He's like one of Andrew Tate's cronies. He had a Christian background, but he couldn't do it under the, the rules and the, and the guidelines that are, are being offered to him. Now you got one golden ticket and you got to give it, give it to a girl and you better white knuckle the shit out of it and hope, you know, that you're not one of those 56%. It's unrealistic. Men are getting married now la later and later. The average age is 32 years old for a man to marry. What are they supposed to do from 21 to 32 or 18 to 32? Cut their dicks off? Cut, you know, just can't jerk off. You're not supposed to, you know, really masturbate even or look at porn. That, that, I, that's against Christianity. That's lusting. So what do you do for all those years? Why are men getting married later? I mean, because... The idea of, I just don't think it works like it used to. I do not think it works like it used to. In addition to this, and this is not going to make people happy, that, what am I going to say here? I got a lot of thoughts, so it's hard to keep track of them all. Um, since the sexual revolution, okay, The divorce, that's really kind of where what led us to the point that we're in now. It's because, you know, sex is being freely given. Men aren't motivated to marry anymore because they can go out and have sex pretty much any time they want without the responsibility, without a commitment, which means responsibility. They can go out and have sex and not have to, you know, pay the taxes on that land. They ain't got to buy the farm anymore. They ain't got to buy the cow. You know, they can get the milk. They don't need the cow. <clears throat> they don't need to buy it. And then, they, you know, commitment, again, responsibility. So, I lost my train of thought again, sorry. Where am I going with this? One of the greatest things that a woman brings into a relationship, I believe, one, one of the most valuable things that she can bring into a relationship, and this is, goes back to biology. I don't believe in evolution, but I do believe in bi biology. I think it's, it's chastity. Okay, a woman comes into a relationship and she hasn't racked up a high body count. That's one of the greatest things that she can give a man. And that's one of the things a man values most, I believe. Because why, a man, a woman that comes in and, and basically was letting anybody get it. Why am I going to, why are you going to make me buy, buy it when you were giving it away to other people? That's the thought process. <clears throat> so... A woman brings in one of the greatest assets that she brings into a relationship is chastity, not having a high body count. The reason that marriage doesn't work is right now women are out. I'm on a dating app. I, I, you know, was kind of just waiting on God to give me a wife for a long time. And now I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go out and increase my, you know, odds, not odds, because I don't believe it's, it's odds, but I'm going to increase the amount of, of women that I'm communicating with. <clears throat> and it's crazy out there, you know, like girls are like looking for short term fun, you know, um, there's hookup sites. I'm not on any of those, <laughs> you know, one girl in her, her profile said, let's, let's, uh, order food and fuck. And I was like, damn. And she was, you know, beautiful girl. And I'm like, it's, it is wild out there. So now you got all that going on. Cardi B, WAP, oh, you know, like all these women are out. And it, there's no shame around promiscuity, female promiscuity anymore. No stigma. And 
sorry as a bee in here. Um, there's no stigma anymore. So you got all these women that are out getting it in. Who's going to marry all these girls? Like, who are you going to go to now after you've racked up this high body count and convinced to give you their one golden ticket? You only get one. Give it to me. When I was out sleeping with all these guys over the last few years, especially if it's a high value man, that's a godly man that has been waiting himself. Think about that, because those are the people that you really want. Those are the people that I believe God wants to lead the charge. Those are the ones that, that you know, are going to build a good family, raise good kids. And, and ultimately, those are the guys that should be allowed polygamy, in my opinion, because I believe all this stems from, you know, like what, why God did this. I don't think it's the ideal situation necessarily. Adam and Eve, he created two. Yes, one man, one woman. I believe all that. But since sin entered the world, there was a lot of concessions made. You know, we're living in a fallen world. For example, we could say if you just believe, well, that's the original design. Well, nudity was the original design. So we should, a nudist could say, well, we're supposed to be naked because Adam and Eve were created naked. No, that's not the case. <clears throat> but I believe that God allowed it because it, it, it all goes back to keeping men in the homes. You got to keep the man in the homes because of the children. When men aren't in the homes, bad things happen for the kids. They're 10 times more likely to drop out of high school, commit suicide, be depressed, you know, like get pregnant, young, all the things, bad things when a man is not in the home. So going back to what Martin Luther said about it's better than fornication and it's better than divorce. Yeah, because if say a man, I know, I know women in city fam where the husband stepped out, was cheating, maybe fell in love with another girl, left the family and kids. Now there's a fatherless home. So it's like, I believe there's always going to be more women that want to get married than there are men that want to get married. More marriageable women, too, than there are marriageable men. How do you fix that? Because you, what we tell people, like I look at the Waiting Works community, 4,000 women in that group, 95 or 9, 99% probably are women because men aren't waiting anymore. Like those women are waiting and they want to get married. Who are they going to marry? It, the numbers don't even work. So, you know, I know it's a controversial topic and I will lose people and offend pe women, especially, I believe, Christian women, which is the majority of my, my platform. The fact that I'm even wrestling with this idea or considering it, let's say, but uh, it's true. You know, <laughs> I am wrestling with it and considering it. And I'm, I'm, I'm dating or talking to women with this idea that this is a possibility in mind that I really am. And I would have never done this if I was still affiliated with my nonprofit because I know how it looks. But again, all I'm concerned about with is being obedient to God. Now, listen, if I meet a girl, a woman, let's say, and I like, I, I like fall completely in love with her to the point that I'm not willing to forego this crazy idea of having a second, potentially third or fourth wife at some point, then I will just marry, like, for example, I meet a, a woman, I'm crazy about her, and I say, hey, listen, there's a possibility that I might want a second wife at some point. If she's like, get the hell out of here, I'm gone, and I don't want to lose her, I, I love her that much, then I'll, I'll marry her, and I'll just be a monogamous like everybody else. But if I don't meet that woman, and I haven't met a, that, that woman yet, in all honesty, in my life, and I'm not young, then I will, then I very well could do this. And it would, you know, obviously you can't get married under the government, which honestly I don't, I think is crazy anyway. You should get married in the sight of God, a covenant, covenant marriage, commitment ceremony of some sort, not necessarily a government sanctioned marriage. I think that's, I don't even know what that is. When that came into play, that wasn't always a thing. If you were supposed to get married in, in the sight of the church, then I'll, I'll pursue this path, you know, and I'll make a lot of content around it. I'll be wide open about it. I'll talk about it and it could blow up in my face. It could be a disaster, but you know, like I, so people, I've talked to some friends about this and one of the people told me, Hey, we should check out that show sister wives. And I've watched it. And, um, 
And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, but they're having problems. I'm like, dude, this dude has been married to three women for 17 years. He's got 50 freaking years of marriage, successful marriage he's been with these women, if you collectively. You can't even make one marriage work for five years, and you're going to criticize his ass? Give me a break, right? These people are like, oh, I like talking, and they're divorced themselves. They didn't even make one marriage work for five years, and this guy's got three for 17. So spare me. But... Yeah, I mean that that's just kind of where I'm at with it. So I'd love to hear your questions if you got if you got any questions, I'd love to hear them. Um here's Cassie said, "What has happened to you?" Nothing's happened to me. I'm just exploring. I what I would say to to you, Cassie, is I I believe that you know like I, all of us you're socially conditioned to believe that this is wrong, but the Bible never explicitly states it. It's not in there. I've researched it. The one verse that I always believe that would be, have been the verse to even let me entertain a crazy idea of, of a possibility like this would have been the verse, and I don't remember the reference, but it says the deacon must be the husband of one wife. That's the one verse that I always thought, well, there it is. You know, like it's black and white. Now, number one, I'm not a deacon. Okay, so that the majority of the people that are Christians aren't deacons. So that so that is, I'll concede that, okay, the, the, the deacon can only have one wife. That's what it means. If you'll concede that everybody that's not a deacon is permitted more than one. But also that word, <coughs> one, <coughs> the original word that they used for that was mia. The Greek word was mia. In Greek, it, mia means one, but it also means first, and it mean, also means a. So like the believers gathered on the mia day of the week, the first day of the week. It wasn't the one and only day of the week. It was the first day of the week. So some people say that, that that verse means that they must be the husband of their first wife. They can't be divorced, which makes sense. But well, some people say that it means a wife, meaning they can't be single. And that also makes sense to me. But even if it does mean one, then everybody that's not a deacon is permitted. You know, the Jews actually practiced polygamy up until a thousand years ago. And the only reason they stopped wasn't because of biblical reasons. It was because they were afraid of anti-Semitism because they were living in a bunch of countries that were had enforced monogamy and they didn't want to be like viewed down upon, looked down upon. So, but I, what I would say to what I would say to that is, if you believe that verse, that that's the only verse that people hang on to that that's you know says anything about you know overseers or deacons must be the husband of one wife. If that meant what you're saying that it means, that it means. You can only have one wife. That would mean that Moses, who wrote the law, he wrote the freaking law himself. He spoke face to face with God. And you're saying he can't be the deacon at our little 50 member church because he was a polygamist. Because Moses had three wives. Well, at least two. Some say three. <clears throat> but yeah, again, I know it sounds crazy. Um, Jim Phillips, let me go through some of these comments here because I'm sure it'll jog some, some thoughts, some things I want to talk about. You can't keep one solid relationship without losing your mind. How are we bumping it up to two, three, four, five? There is a design in place and it's pretty obvious. Well, so I think the design in place, if you want to talk about conservative or traditional marriage, this is way more traditional because that, again, everybody, all the greats, all these people that were mentioned in God's hall of fame were all polygonists and they're mentioned in Hebrews. You know, this something else that's interesting, at least worth thinking about, is that God said to David, he said, I gave you your master's wives. And if they weren't enough, I would have given you more. That's what God said to David. He gave you, I gave you your 18 wives. And if they weren't enough, I would have given you more. Why'd you do this with Bathsheba? So you're telling me that it was sinful and God gave him that? No, God wouldn't give you something sinful or wrong. So again wrestling with the ideas learning exploring i say i would even say let's see who's on here tanya owens stacy strong I shouted you out sabello rick Perez, katie walbert courtney creech lauderdale creech how are you carolyn Patton. carolyn says you are on point thank you i appreciate that lisa carmine how are you keep staying true you don't care about what people say you just want to be obedient to god that is true carolyn how do you clean the cesspool. I really believe that this cleans the cesspool. This, it, it's hard to convince a man, a Christian man to go out and sign up for this, <laughs> especially in this 
degenerate world that we're living in because there's the options for marriage. There's so few women that are, that in my mind would be deserving of a man that's walked the path that I have. I just feel like the, 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 the it's a very small percentage. Okay. Now look, whether that percentage is, we can have different opinions about how big that percentage is, but it's not the majority. Okay. It's definitely a minority w way under 10%, I believe of women that would be someone that, you know, just in, from a karma standpoint, just from like a, you know, the universe to say like this, someone that's been walking with God and, and working on themselves and waiting, how many women, you know, and how many men or women are doing that? Not many, in all honesty, because people have just thrown out the baby with the bathwater at this point. They're just like, they're out fornicating. Now, and this is what I would say to women. Let me, let me, let me say this. Most women are going to push back on this and be like, hell no, I would never do that. You're out of your mind. You're a misogynist for thinking that, whatever else. This is what I would say to you. Okay, don't fornicate. Because that is in the Bible, very clearly in the Bible, that fornication is sin. Okay, having sex outside of marriage. And if women would just commit to that, what they would see very quickly is they would get a reality check. And they would see, oh shit, they're... <laughs> There ain't that many men out here that are going to actually marry. I might be single for the rest of my life. I may never have sex again. But what they do instead is they go out and they give it away. They, they sleep with men. They give it away and they have hope because they're like, I'm just, I, you know, sooner or later, I'm going to meet that guy because they are sleeping with alphas, you know, maybe because men will men will sleep with women that are below them. Meaning like when I say below, obviously everyone's equal. But they're mean, meaning like a woman that you would never commit to, you know, like she's not, her sexual market value is nowhere near what you want in a woman, but you would sleep with her. Women don't, won't do that. Women, when, so they'll, they'll sleep with men that are above and that they have no chance of getting the commitment from, but then they have hope because they start believing sooner or later, you know, I got, this guy's interested in me. I'm spending time with him. I'm not alone. I'm getting sex. And sooner or later, I'm going to find a man that's willing to marry, but they don't. They don't find the men that are willing to marry them. And eventually they go out and they, they marry someone that is their equal in the sexual marketplace. So if you, if women just committed to not fornicating, what they would see very quickly is I might be single for a long time or forever because that, cause that's what I did. I committed to not fornicating and I got a reality check about the situation for real, for real which even led me to look into this because I would have never believed that <laughs> I just assumed that what I've always been taught was true. I get where you're coming from. Colleen Stevens says, but I would rather stay single than having a share man. And that's great. Look, everybody has that prerogative. I would say this, the majority of the population won't do this. You know, I'm talking about, I don't think everybody's going to go out and have multiple wives. I don't, I don't think that. I think it's going to be a very small percentage of 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 men and women that would sign up for this but i think that if it was if it was a little more acceptable or maybe just decriminalized i think it changes the relationship you know if a woman knows that at some point my husband can go out and marry a second woman if he wanted to even if he never does it i think that 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 changes the relationship because what happens now is women get comfortable in relationships and oftentimes men get stuck in sexless marriages because they know that they are their, that man's only access to sexual expression is that woman. And sometimes they'll use that as a, a, a power play and as a card, they'll play it. And I got friends that are in marriages where they ain't had sex in a long time. And I think that this restores patriarchy to the home, which is a very important. The Bible is really the first red pill book, honestly. And I know women won't want to hear that and they won't like it, but I do believe that I, I, I do believe that only the, the, a minority of people will actually do this. I mean, number one, you're going to have to get your money right because you got to support, you know, multiple, multiple wives that ain't going to be cheap. And you gotta, you gotta have game. You're going to probably be in great shape in order to, to, to do this. I'm not even saying that I can. I think I used to be able to when I was, when I was a younger man. 
But I'm saying I do believe that it would be massively good for the world. I can't believe that a 50 per 6 percent divorce rate is the best that we can do. You know, like, no, this is what God, this is God's ideal. We're doing it right here in America. And we got a 56 percent divorce rate and massive fornication. Most people and most people that are sexually active right now are in polygamous relationships already. They are. They're out. Um, even the married people, I, I bet you if you, you tallied up everybody that's sexually active, the majority of them are polygamous and they're just lying about it, which is really scummy. They're being deceptive. I think most women are more offended by the fact that a man lies and he cheats more than they are about the sex. Maybe that maybe the love thing, I could see how that would be hard for a woman to know that your your man was in, in love with someone else. But you know, like they say in the sister wives thing is that love should be multiplied, not divided. And I heard another analogy to say like some women would say, well, why does a man need multiple wives? Isn't one enough? You know, and the same argument could be applied to children. Like, what if your child said, why do you need to have a second child? Aren't I enough? No, because you're so great. <laughs> you know, that having children are so great. I want to have, I want to have two or three. I know it's women aren't children and maybe that's not exactly the same, but I, I get where the guy's coming from when he says what love should be multiplied. In addition to the fact that I just know that for me, monogamy never felt all that natural. You know, like, I, it, ne it never felt like a natural fit. And I think that this explains why that is. At least for me, I think that this explains why I, I felt that way. Exodus 21, it's very clear. But God says, if a man chooses to take a second wife, da 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 he, he outlines the, the guidelines for how to do it. And I don't see God providing moral guidelines for an immoral act. I just don't, I don't see how that's possible. So that's where I'm at. I know this is going to be a shocker to people, but I do think it would be massively good for the world. I, I would love, I don't know what God's going to do with this, but this is what I would love. I would love to bring, make this. Okay. So I, where we're at now, I believe poly, like polyamory. I didn't even know what the term was a few years ago. That thing, it's so popular right now where people are just hitting multiple committed relationships and that's a mess, right? But people are more open to non-monogamous relationships than they've ever been. But they're, they're not all acceptable to God. It, the Bible's very clear about things. He's clear about adultery. He's clear about fornication. He's clear about divorce. But he's also clear about marriage. And if you operate within his guidelines, there's certain things. This is right. This is wrong. And... It, it, it's explicitly stated. The Bible's very specific and it was never, this was never stated. And I'll challenge anybody to go out there and prove me wrong. But most of the people that engage in this lifestyle that are poly polygonous are usually like, they look like they're Amish, <laughs> they're very plain Jane, or they're like maybe Muslims and they got the head, you know, dress on or whatever, or, and, or even like the sister watch guy, you know, just, he looks like a Mormon to me. Um, but there's nobody out there that's really brought it into the mainstream in a way that's godly, you know, like, and said, look, this is, this is a way that you can still be in God, the will of God and in God's good graces. And, and maybe find a, a relationship structure that feels a little bit more natural to you. Anyway, again, going back to where I went, I was dug in on this. I believe I was so dug in on monogamy. I was completely, I didn't even question it, to be honest, to the point that I've spent 18 of the last 23 years, single and alone waiting for this, the fulfillment of this, you know, this belief that I had that there was going to be this one woman that came along for me to fall crazy in love with and, and marry and, you know, like, if it works so well, why, why are we, why are we at a 56% divorce rate? You know, like it, that'd be a question I'd be challenge anybody to try to answer. Like that's actually to the point I saw a video the other day, a lawyer say that's negligence. If you get married, you're being negligent because it's a 50%, 6% chance of you failing. How do we change the, the narrative? You know, like, so anyway, that's where I'm, I'm looking into it. We'll see what happens. I know it's crazy. But again, it took me a while to get to this point where I, 
So the guy, the person, the first article, and I'll send this to anybody. Drop me a DM if you want this this article about polygony. The guy goes into great detail. He actually set out to disprove that polygony was okay, that it was okay with God. He set out to disprove it. He was actually a guy, he's a good Christian man, married as a virgin, has one wife, you know, not not going to have a second wife. But he's a, he set out to disprove it, and what he became convinced of was that God's completely okay with it, and he actually thinks it would do massive good for the world if it was decriminalized or, or, or you know, legalized. And so that, that's the guy, Berean Patriot. He's actually going to come on. He's, he's been on my podcast twice already. We're going to do an episode tomorrow. And we're going to, eventually we're going to do an episode on polygamy. And he'll talk all about this. I challenge you all to watch, watch it with an open mind. Shoot holes in it. Go for it. Please do. Shoot holes in it. I'd love to hear them. No one's been able to yet. I've talked to, you know, quite a few people about this and no one's been able to, to really convince me that everything that they do is inferring that oh well he's god said this so he really meant this no listen god the bible's very specific god tells women not to have sex with animals i mean that's how specific he is right he goes into having sex with animals like if this was wrong it would be stated somewhere so yeah i would i would challenge anybody out there to think about it but again to all the critics just just commit to the things that you know god did say for sure right Fornication's wrong. Stop there. Stop there and and get a get a real read of the playing field because you, your views may change at that point. Or you may just decide to stay single for the rest of your life, which is okay too. Okay, let's see. Eric Hudson, what's up, brother? Mary McCartan. Marianne. How are you, Marianne? Melissa Hart. My little sister, Amber Ward. What's up, Amber? If you're condemning polygamy, I won't be following you. I'm I'll condoning. That's okay. Unfollow, Joel. This is a sin anyway. You stop, show me where it's a sin, Joel. He says you want to try to justify it. God would never want you on here preaching this. You need to be more careful what you preach about. It's a shame because I was with you up until this point. I don't know where, where sharing a man is anything God like. Delete. Okay. Sorry to see you go, but again. I would love to see the scriptural basis for you saying that it's a sin. I mean, Moses wrote the law. If it's a sin, under his own guidelines and teachings, he would have to be put to death. Because some people say that, oh, no, no, it's, polygamy is adultery because you're having sex with more than one wife, uh, one woman. If that's the case, then Moses would have had to be killed. And he wrote the law because he was a polygamist. I mean, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Again, shoot holes in it. I'm, I'm, I don't even have a girlfriend, so I got no dog in this fight. I'm just telling you what I've learned. Whoa, the Bible clearly states that one woman and one man should be joined together, not several men with one woman. Sh show me the scripture, Amber. I think what you're talking about is the two become one flesh, right? That's the scripture that the man will leave his father and mother and, and unite to his wife and the two become one flesh. The Bible also says that you become one flesh with a, a prostitute when you sleep with her. Right? So how's that work? Because you can sleep with more than one prostitute and you can sleep with prostitutes while you're married. So if it just meant when you become one, like that doesn't, it's not what it, it means. It's not what that verse means. Angie jo Josephina, Vince Michael, what's up Vince? Bobby Green, Lila Shaw. What has led you to want to share this, Carolyn? Ask. So, I'll, t I'll touch on your your comment in a second, Amber. My, what has led me to share this was because. So again, what I went through the last two decades, waiting, you know, believing that monogamy was the only relationship structure that was acceptable to God, and knowing that no man will go through that. No man would go through that. What they would do is what I said before is they'll fornicate. They'll just have sex outside of marriage, which is the easiest thing to do. And when you make babies outside of marriage, it's not great for the kids. Or they'll just marry someone that they like enough and they'll either cheat or the relationship will fizzle out at some point and they'll end up a statistic. They'll end up as one of the 56%. That's what will happen. No, they won't wait forever. <laughs> you know, they're not going to do it. <clears throat> they're not going to go through what I went through. 
<clears throat> it was way too hard. So Amber says, so each, this is my sister also. So each husband should love his wife as much as he loves himself. And each husband should respect her husband. I, lo I agree with that. Is that somehow proving that monogamy is the only thing that God accepts? The one ver there's another verse that talks about uh, each each woman would have her own husband, and or and each I think it says each husband should have his own wife, and each wife her own husband, or something like that, right? There's a verse that people point out to support monogamy. In that verse, if you go back to the original words, own God, Paul uses two different words for own for men when it says. Each husband should have his own, and each wife should have her own. There are two different words in the original text. One is for exclusivity, and one is for non-exclusivity. One word was used when it said, each man went to his own city. You know, that was the word they used over and over for non-exclusivity. So, like, when they did a census, when they counted everybody in the town, everybody had to go to their own city. It wasn't that man's own and only city. Like, it was everybody's, you know, like, and then for but for the woman, own was a different word. And I would challenge you to go look this up and do the research. And you can believe it or not believe it, but it would be, it's kind of interesting that, why would Paul use two different words for, for own there? If it wasn't something that he was kind of trying to, you know, I just don't understand why he would use two different words. One for non-exclusivity and one for exclusivity. Doesn't make sense to me. Lisa Marie Baker Rogers, Sonia Camp, Anthony Lowry, what's up, brother? Joe Glovno. Brian Moore, Seth Dukes, Stephanie Jablinski, Michelle Murray, Richard Webster, how's it going? M Melissa Holden, Kevin Henderson's here. Allie Anderson, Heather Morrison, Quinny Patel, what's up, Quinny? Uh, Sherry Rodriguez, Candace Blackburn. Okay, Rachel Peterson said, I understand the appeal of polygamy. What keeps that from being adultery for the second plus wife? What keeps, she's asking, what keeps it from being adultery for the second plus wife? If a man marries a divorced woman, they're both adulterers, right? This is the other thing that people fail to <laughs> leave out. Under the Bible's guideline, really, if you really want to hold to the Bible, if once, once you get married, you can't get married again, even, even with abandonment or adultery. So that's how serious of a covenant you make with another person in marriage. You can't just go get married to somebody else, have a second a second husband or wife, regardless of what happened in that relationship, if you really want to obey the Bible, because that is in there. Again, this isn't explicitly stated anywhere, but that is explicitly stated. That anybody that marries the, the divorced woman commits adultery. That's what the Bible says. So, like, I know people don't want to hear that because there's probably a lot of divorced people, you know, watching right now. That's what it says. So if you're going to be critical, make sure you read everything. And apply it to yourself on every level, all the things. But as far as I think I just covered that. How you how the Bible defines adultery is sleeping with another man's wife. It's not sleeping with another woman's husband, even. That's not adultery. That's fornication. Sleeping with another man's wife is how you, you define adultery. But if you're married to that woman, you're not committing adultery. So and again, if it was adultery then Moses would have had to have been killed. He would have had to be stoned to death because he was an adulterer, is that what you're saying? And he wrote the law. So would have David, so would have Sol you know, Solomon, and all these people would have had to have been stoned to death. Okay, Sherry Gunta Owens, what's up? Megan Smith. Again, Cassie, show the scripture. I'd love to see it. I, Jennifer Cheney Healy. What's up? Tamara Bradford Estlid. Let's see. Melissa Hart. Date a woman with the intention to love her, not what she can give you sexually. Then God may give you the gift of marriage that you are searching for. Obviously, Melissa, I'm not dating. I didn't date with a with the intention of getting anything from women sexually, which is, I've been abstinent for almost two decades. No one can compare their record to mine. No one probably be watching, at least with the options that I had. I was surrounded by women that I could have dated and slept with. For, for the majority of the last 20 years. So I, I did, you know, I wasn't dating women with what they could give me sexually at all, which is why I I barely went on any dates, as you know. So, but I, I love that people, again, give advice to something that they've never done. You, it's hard to give advice if you haven't walked the path that I have, because most people, again, just 
hooked up. <laughs> they just did. They did what I did before. You know, like I've done what you've done. You haven't done what I've done. Heather Morrison said, "You'll be weighing over your head, friend. Trust me, you don't want to take care of more than one woman's work." LOL. I'm, I think I'd like to try. <laughs> Holly Pratt, what's up? Jim Phillips, you can't keep. Uh, we already read that one. Man, or it's just man who has been single for how many years? <laughs> right. Why? That's the point, Amber. Is I didn't know that polygamy was even an option. And had I known, I, I would have married a long time ago. I believe. I love how you think outside the box, though. Heather said, "Thank you." There we go. Turn it into a positive. Dorsey Butterball. <laughs> I did write a book by Waiting Works. I still believe in not in saving sex for marriage, Cassie. The Bible's very clear about that. The Bible's clear about not having sex outside of marriage. But the Bible isn't clear about this. So you can worry. It's okay. I'm fine. But I, again, I have good discernment. I've prayed a lot about this, and I feel nothing but green lights from God. I, so we'll see. We'll see where it goes. It, it, it may or may never happen. Go watch Jerry Springer. <laughs> Cassie, you sound like a Pharisee. I, I love you, but I'm okay. Again, it, go, go back to the Bible, not your opinion. Okay, that's, everybody's got their opinion. Oh, I can't imagine having more than one wife. God, you're going to have a favorite. Blah, blah, blah. Look, all that may be true, but all you're saying in those cases is, I know more than God. Because God did not, he actually told you to do this in some cases, commanded you in Exodus 21. If your brother's wife dies, you marry her, and you and you have to do X, Y, and Z. And one of those, those letters was continue to have sex with her and the first wife. God commanded you to do that. And he says, if you don't do it, you're a disgrace. Now, some people say, oh, that's because, you know, he was trying to grow the nation of Israel. Another inferring, right? But it was a command. So, again, all that, you know, like, oh, this would happen, that would happen. It's like, to me, it reminds me of all the all the arguments I've heard people say about saving sex for marriage. Oh, my God, if you wait to have sex before marriage, what if they're bad in bed? Or people are just going to get married just to have sex with each other, and it's going to be horrible. People have to have sex outside of marriage. You're, again, you're saying that you know more than God, right? All I care about is what does the Bible say? That's it. If you can show me in the Bible... Sign me up. But if you can't, I don't really want to hear your opinion. You know, I've referred, I've referenced that scene from the movie Contact where, anyway, I don't want to get into that. But it, it's, you know, I think it would do, a, I think it would do more good for the world than it would harm if this was uh, something that was more common or more acceptable, I should say. Shane and Joy Meyer, what's up? Rachel Peterson. After watching Sister Wives, it looks like an almost impossible thing to do. Well, women are naturally relational. After we saw the wives form alliances with each and lose faith in their husband, women need more relational investment than just sharing sex time on rotation. I agree. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be challenges to it. There's going to be inherent challenges to any relationship structure, whether it's abstinence, being alone, whether it's monogamy, or whether it's polygamy, there's going to be inherent challenges in each structure. I agree. But that guy did have three wives for at least 17 years. I don't even know many people that can have one wife or one marriage for 17 years. What's the percentage of people that even have one for that long? 10%, maybe? Five? This guy had three for 17 Maybe they did fizzle. I don't know. I haven't made it that far in the in the in the uh, series, but it met better than most people. Daphne, Shanice, Rico, what's up? Jenna Whittle. People weaponize sex. Yes, for sure. Christian Dixon, what's up? How's it going? I haven't talked to you in a while. So it would just be the men or both? No, it would just be the men. And again, people say, well, that's how's that fair? Listen, take it up with God. Again, this isn't something that I'm making up. This is all in the Bible. You might not like it. Talk to God about it. Nicole, what's up? Barbara Williamson, Miriam Vianette Velez, keeping us on our toes, Heather said. <laughs> Heather Rawls, what's up, Heather? Jenna Whittle, curious your thoughts on the many polygamous relationship where it is multiple women, men with one woman. 
that's called polyandry, and I think that that is a sin. You know, again, I think the Bible, the Bible's very clear about all this stuff. Okay, how could, it, you would be committing adultery every time you had sex with that woman, because a, a woman can only have one husband. Okay, it says, when you have sex with another man's wife, that's adultery. That is the definition of adultery. So, every time she had sex with that second or third or whatever husband, he was, she would be committing adultery according to God. Again, you don't have to like it. I'm not even saying that it's fair necessarily. But it, it, that's what is in the Bible. Shoot holes in it. Go for it. Look it up for yourself. Hannah, Hannah what's up? You, you need to interview married people because your hypothetical point of views are hard to follow. Interview poly marriage monogamous marriage. There's some good real content. Yeah, Melissa, I've already been in contact with the guy, the, the director of biblical uh, biblicalfamilies.org. They're a nonprofit organization out of Tennessee, I believe, and it's all you know, pol biblical polygonist marriages, and they have retreats and everything else. I challenge anybody to go to their website and look at the information because they got all the scriptures right there. They got all the, you know, anything that anybody any would say here, all the rebuttals are right there that explains what it is. Now, you don't have to accept it, but I would challenge people to go look. Thank you. I want to be happy too. And we'll see. Maybe it is in a, a poly, a polygamous relationship. It's not cheating, Wendy. What Actually, what men are doing now is cheating. It's not cheating because there's no deception involved. You're married. You're responsible for that person. Again, what's going on now is, is scum. It's scummy. Deception, lies, passing women on to the next one. That's exactly what's happening. Now, you're, as far as I know, you're, you're doing it right God's way. And what you're seeing is the reality of how many men are out there that are worth marrying. Or that will even marry. It's almost like without this, you can't even blame a woman for going out and marrying a guy that's not godly. A guy, a guy, like, because there's so few. There's so few godly single men in the church. You couldn't even blame a woman for going out and marrying somebody that, that wasn't a Christian. What, what happens to all those women? What happens if a woman gets widowed? Paul tells them to remarry. Who are they going to marry? They're in, the numbers don't work. So they get pushed out of the sexual marketplace. So, sorry, you, you get no family. You, you get no sex for the rest of your life because there just ain't enough men, honey. I mean, practically, to me, it makes sense. James Loomis, what's up? Gloria Peeling. Allison Lighty. I see Alonzo. Joel Grove is watching. I'm glad lesbians are clear now. <laughs> Actually, we're gonna do a we're gonna do a uh, an episode on homosexuality. It, it, it's some really eye opening stuff in there. You all want to watch that one. I don't. That'll be in a couple weeks from now. Check that one out. This with the same guy, Brian Patriot. Go to his website actually, BrianPatriot.com. Check it out for yourself. Shoot holes in it. Again, if I'm missing something, I would love to know where. But just don't give me your opinion. You know, just it's sin. I'm worried about you. It's gonna be a disaster. All that. I don't care. Go look it up for yourself. Do the research. Shoot holes in it. Shoot me a message. I'd love to hear it. Carrie Paul Phillips, what's up? Jackie Watson, Angie Jones. Hey, Angie. Angie. Let's took some pictures together. Janelle. If y'all need a good photographer, by the way, hit up Angie Jones. She's on Hillwatch right now. Uh, marriage is to bring glory to God. Paul talks about why it's important to be single if you aren't married because, whoops, most aren't putting God first in their singleness. We are not made to be alone, but if our relationships don't bring glory to God, then we should continue to seek God daily in order to build this up with who to join together with. I agree. We've done that. We, again, single for 18 years without sex. Trisha Souders. Went, Cassie says, just another Christian quote unquote male rewriting the Bible as those searching themselves. I don't know what the quotes are for, <laughs> Cassie. I mean, would I say the same about you because you fornicate it? I mean, come on, right? Like, please. Shane Kelly, what's up? Sarah Rowe, Elijah Sacra, Dana Wall, Stephanie Presley, what's up? Mary, Maria and Antonia Gonzalez. It could be that the Old Testament talked about multiple lives to bring children forth and further the bloodline of Christ. Again, that's inferring, right? That's an inference. It's not explicitly stated, but okay, go with it. 
we needed to populate the earth. Does that ring true? I would say God needed to be glorified on all levels, not agreeing or disagreeing. I don't think God needed to do anything. Like if God, if it was a sin, God's not gonna, God's not gonna, He doesn't tempt us to sin, right? He's not gonna even encourage us to do something that's sinful in order to accomplish anything, because He's nothing's impossible with Him. If He wanted to, He could have po- created the earth, populated it if He needed to. So I don't, I don't think that that rings true. But I, maybe it was something that was allowed back then, and then you know, for whatever reason, God did, you know, thought monogamy would be good, and now He's letting it come back in because of the cesspool that exists in the world. Again, if you look at what we got on our hands right now, it is a mess. It's a, the, the right now the rate of marriage. If you all don't know this, is five in every thousand. It's the lowest it's ever been since they started keeping records. That's how few people are getting married. People don't see value in it anymore. They don't, men, I know a lot of men, they don't want to get trapped. So they don't marry. And, and that's sin. How do you convince a man? What, how do you make it more attractive? Again, this isn't my opinion. This is something that I've looked into. And again, it's not stated in the Bible at all that it, you can't do this. I think practically it would fix a lot of the issues that we face now and make marriage more attractive to men. Marcella, what's up, Marcella? Seymour, Michelle Bays, Liz Lebowski, Jason Starr, Mark Rayford, Melissa Bana, Joshua Mims, Yusef Rashad, Eric Miller, what's up, homie? E-Rock, Michael Feynman, Kevin Hagee, Heather, maybe he has more more for me to change before you marry. That's possible. But I know that like, I'd be hard-pressed to find somebody that's worked as hard on themselves over the last 20-plus you know, plus years than me. I mean, I've always reading books, podcasts, working out, diet, going to seminars, landmark, gap, heart work, crucible. Like, I did it all, you know? So if there's more, I mean, I got I hope I hope he does it before I freaking die before I can't get an erection anymore, before I, you know, at this point, even if I did have kids, I'd be a freaking grandpa by the time they got into high school. So, like, maybe there's more that needs to change, but then I don't think that God expects us to arrive to a point of perfection in order to, for us to get married, because if that was the case, the majority of people wouldn't be married. So, you know, anytime you bring up some something that challenges people's, what they believe and what they've been taught, they automatically assume that something, number one, that it's wrong, but number two, that you've done something wrong. Like I've had, I was talking to a, a guy about this on a Zoom call the other day, and he was like, "Oh, you man, he goes, what I started doing was, you know, you, you need to pray like this. You just need to start thanking God for your wife. Like assuming that, oh, the reason that you've been single for 23 years isn't because maybe God wants to use you in this capacity. It's because you've been praying wrong. You just haven't prayed right for the last 20 years. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Is what I think when somebody says that. It's so religious. It's so like pharisaical to come off like that. Like, if you look back in the Bible, Job, you know, had whatever happened to Job. All that bad stuff happened to Job, and he had these friends that were like, oh, it's definitely because you sinned. God did this. You must have done something. And no, it wasn't that. You didn't know what God was doing, and you automatic. His friends automatically assumed that he had done something wrong when he was more righteous than all of them. So when people will come off and they're like, oh, you know, automatically you're wrong or you've done something wrong or like that to me is so freaking self-righteous and religious. I just can't stand it. You don't know. But the Bible says how unsearchable God's ways are and it's past beyond tracing out. You can't know what God is doing. He's infinite, you know, intelligence. And we try to assume that we're going to put him out. Oh, it definitely means this. Like, you don't know. That's, check yourself. Get humble. All right. Where are we at? All right. Can you turn the volume up? I can't. I'm sorry. Uh, maybe you got to turn it up on your end. Uh, can you please? It says, are there any states right now that have legalized polygamy? Not that I know of, but here's the deal. Like, again, you, I don't think you need to go get the government involved. I think you do a covenantal, a covenant marriage in the sight of God. And I think there are pastors out there that would do this. Um, I've only read the federal so far, but what are you saying? Are you just trying to justify being a married, being a married player now? <laughs> LOL. I don't, I don't want to be a player no more. As Big Ron said, I don't want to be a player. No, I'm kidding. But I don't want to be a player. 
and I don't want to be a cheater, and I don't ever want to get divorced, which is why I've stayed in this position as hard as it's been, believing what I've been taught, and that monogamy was it, and waiting for this, praying, waiting, behaving, for the most part, I mean, I wasn't perfect, but I was pretty, pretty good. Okay. Shane says, while polygamy is not a sin, historically it has not worked and frowned upon. However, I definitely, it's definitely frowned upon. You can see in the comments here. It is a sin for a woman to have multiple husbands because it taints the bloodline. 100% goes back to even just just the um, the DNA, the um, sorry, paternity, right? Because if you had multiple husbands, you wouldn't even know who the father is just from a biological standpoint. It doesn't work. King Solomon had 700 wives. Crazy, right? Plant as many seeds as possible. Smiley face. I'm sure Amber is not going to like that. Just kidding. I meant for you, for you to change in the world. I meant for you to change. What more for you to do before? Oh, maybe. That was my belief, honestly. Thank you for clarifying. Is I believe that God hadn't brought a wife into the picture because there were certain things I had to do as a single man. But it... In all honesty, the way things, so there was definitely some things that happened earlier in the year. I don't want to talk too much about it, but that I just was like, what in the hell is happening here? Like, I didn't, it wasn't justified. I didn't do some, it wasn't a consequence of a sin. Something came out of left field, and I was like, I could see God was in it. If you go back and look at my blogs, I could say I prayed about it. I had complete peace. I knew God was in it. I don't know what he's doing. His fingerprints are all over it. Those were the exact language I used. But I, so I went with it. It was extremely painful, and it was confusing, and now I believe that this is why. I believe that I would have never even considered this, nor would I have talked about it, had I been in my former position as, you know, in my nonprofit or even at my old church, because I, I, wouldn't, want to, I wouldn't want to hurt them. You know, like, I don't want to, I know how it's viewed, and I don't want it, and I know it looks weird. So I wouldn't have wanted to hurt the, the mission. So I wouldn't have. I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have talked about it. I wouldn't even have looked into it. But now I'm, I'm not beholden to anybody. I'm, you know, except God. He's the only person that I'm trying to please, an audience of one. So, anyway. Oh, I wouldn't. Melanie Mitt, Melanie Wexler, what's up, Melanie? Okay, but for real, do you think you can handle multiple women? We are emotional creatures. I think I can. I mean, it, it might sound cocky to say that, but I had multiple girlfriends. Again, there, there was no commitment there. Like, but we spent time together. I don't know. You know, honestly, I've never done it. I've never been in. Uh, I've never even been married to one girl. Can I marry? Can I be married to more than than one successfully? I don't know. I can't say yes. I think I can, but I'm not sure. And there's only one way for me to find out. And look, I'm going to pray my way all the way through this. And if God gives me peace, I'll do it. If he doesn't, I won't. And just because God gives you peace doesn't mean everything's going to be great either. Like, I've had things blow up in my face that I know God told me to do. And they blew up in my face and came back on me in a painful way. <clears throat> I like to say Jesus did everything right. He still got nailed to a cross at the end of his life. He did everything. He was perfect. And he still got nailed to the cross. So it's like sometimes I think we think that, oh, yeah, if we behave and we pray, we do everything right, everything's going to work out. All the prayers are going to get answered, and we're going to have this great, happy life. And that ain't the case always. Sometimes God has a different story, and he, you know, he needs you to play a different part in the net, his story. And sometimes it involves pain. I don't know. So I, all I know is I have to do what I have peace about, take the next step of obedience, whatever that is. And if it's this, I'll do it. Sound went way down. Sorry. Oh, let me see here. I have my hands asleep now. Okay, I don't know if that went up. That's all I got. Oh, shit. Sorry, guys. I know why the sound went down. Is that better? Okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> Jacqueline Houston says, bring me on with you. I want to discuss and ask questions. LOL. Well, shoot me your questions. I don't, I don't want to get into a debate here, but I'll, I'd be happy to read them and potentially answer them. Darren Sprouse. Uh, LOL, I heard you answer my question and start singing. I don't want to be a player no more. <laughs> Thanks. Missy Jones. 
Blowjobs count, Rob, LOL. You said you've been pretty good, so I'm just clarifying. Well, so first off, what makes you think that I've gotten blowjobs? I have not. I don't know what you're talking about, Jacqueline, or what you think you know, but you're wrong. Heather Morrison, I was with you there. Mendoza, Adrian, you humbled yourself. Yes, I feel like I did. The Bible says, humble yourself and God will lift you up. Okay, Stacy Strong has some questions. Let's see. Why, why have a man with many wives when you can have one that is faithful to only you? I have this. I think it's great. No, no, I think the majority of women will only have one wife. And if you can find one great man, um, do it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think <clears throat> there's a, a large percentage of women, the majority by far, that are out there that want to be married, that can't find a husband, a good husband to marry them. And it's because it's, it's, it's really not an attractive proposition to a man to get married these days because what's in it for them? They can have sex pretty much anytime they want. They can have companionship and they don't get wrecked if things don't work out. And there's a 56% chance that things won't work out. So it's not at the moment. Sorry guys. Um, I got to get off here in a minute, but Hey, this was great. I'm sorry. I, I have another call. I just realized what time it was. Um, let me see if I can cover Stacy's question really quick. If waiting actually works, does that mean only the women have to wait because now she's marrying a man? The husband obviously could only possibly wait for the first one, but then not the others. True that. Yep. That's exactly what it means biblically, I guess, because if a man is already married and he's actually active and the woman is, is not until she's married. Um, that's a good point. I mean, again, I'm not saying any of this is really fair necessarily. I'm just saying this is what the Bible says. And you could say, well, the Bible is written by men. I don't believe that. I believe that the Bible was written by God and it's perfect and it's inerrant. <clears throat> it says all scriptures God breathed and is useful for teaching, correcting, and training in righteousness. That's what I believe. Should one woman be allowed to have multiple husbands? No. Hard enough to find one good wife. Now we're back banking on finding multiple. Let me explain the thought process here. <clears throat> okay. As a man that's been waiting, okay, I know girls that liked me, okay, over the last X amount of years on some level. Now, would they have, they went out and they were not waiting, or at least not to the level that I was. Maybe they were waiting for a time, but then they went out and they gave up because it was just too hard and they've slept with a, a handful of guys. For me, like that, that, you know, it, 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 the equivalent is if somebody's, if you're in really good shape, you know, this is the way at least I think. I'm not saying all men think like this. If you're in really good shape, you want to marry somebody else that's in good shape. You want to, you want somebody else that's put the work in and they, you know, you don't, you, you're not going to marry a, an obese person if you're, if you're lean and muscular because you're just going to be like, now look, there are people that probably do it, but for, for in general, exceptions don't make the rule not true. <clears throat> so for me, the same would be like finding a woman that's put, that's, wait it's that long and put that level of work in to get that one golden ticket that I have. Now, maybe I'll meet her. I'm not saying that it, it's impossible. Maybe it'll happen. I'm just saying it's unlikely. But if I was to date a girl and maybe she's went out and she, she didn't put the work in the way that I did, or at least not for as long, let's say, or whatever, I wouldn't rule her out of being one of two or three wives. You can say that's a bad thing and call me, call me a bad guy for thinking that way. But that is the way that I think, you know, like it would have to be such an exceptional woman to get that one <laughs> golden ticket from me. And you could say that, well, that, well, that's prideful that you think so highly of yourself. I think everybody should think highly of themselves. I hopefully you see yourself as the prize that I feel like it's unlikely to find that these days, given the way the world is, the way the dating pool has been so funked up. And I know people do it. They marry people that, you know, maybe they don't worry about their body count or whatever else, but those people probably also weren't people that were, were waiting themselves. <clears throat> but then again, if we're going to talk about what people do, we have to look at what our results are and numbers don't lie. 
56% divorce rate. And fewer people getting married now than ever in history. 5% out of, five out of every thousand. Not even 5%, point, what is that? 0 0.5, 0 0.05, whatever it is, 0 0.05. Okay, hard enough to find one good wife. Now we're becoming, uh, what, what do the boundaries look like? One wife says you can have sex with me 30 minutes. I don't know, I, I haven't done it, so I don't know practic practically the way this works out. What I've heard people say that are doing is you have to make sure that you treat each woman equally. You know, spend the equal amount of time with each one. If one gets a this kind of car, then the other has to get just as nice of a car. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm an expert at this. I haven't done it. How do you figure out who you're going to sleep with at night? Everyone's in one bed. Is a different wife depending upon the night of the, the week? Yeah, I'm not sure. Seems confusing and complicated. Might be, again, an error challenge in each one. Ryan James, what's up? Dana Marie. Rob, this is hilarious. Thank you. I'm glad I'm entertaining you. Jenna Osorio. Let's see if there's anything else before I jump off here. Bobby Dyer. What's up, Bobby? Bring me on. Oh, Jacqueline Houston said, yeah, no, we're not doing that. What Rob says makes sense. Is it? If we are the chosen, we will need spiritual and actual warriors. We are men of Christ and we, we must lead. <clears throat> I'll tell you one thing that... One benefit I would say to this is that since I've thought about this idea and considered that this might be a possibility, it has motivated me more than I've been motivated ever probably in my life to go out and build and, and, and succeed and earn because I'm like, nothing will motivate a man like the prospects of, of sex or just a woman. People have fought wars for women. Men have. So it's, it, I think it motivates men to go out and reach their full potential um, because they, I would imagine that when you come home, you feel like a king, you know? Now, when your woman is wearing the pants, when the, the, the frame has shifted to her, you don't feel like a king, you know, like you, you feel emasculated. And then eventually what happens is the woman ends up leaving your ass anyway because she resents you because a woman wants a strong man and she wants to... She might, she's going to try to lead. She's going to try to like give you a shit, a shit test is what they talk about in red pill. And I, I knew what that meant long before I ever heard the term, but you have to pass those tests and you have to be, be in your masculine energy in order to lead them. And that's what they want, even though they'll try to lead, but if you let them, they'll resent you. And then they'll, they'll leave your ass eventually for somebody more masculine. So I do think it, it, it helps a man walk in his masculine energy much more. So that being said, I did create a Facebook group called the Unplugged Christian Alphas. I would encourage any men out there to go join it. I'm not saying I'm going down this path for sure, but if I do go down this path, I will tell you I will need to be everything that we're teaching in that group. I will need to embody that. I'll need to be in my best physical shape, money, game, <clears throat> spiritually, because I'll have to lead, you know, be a priest of my home. I'll have to have all my shit together, all my points uh, I'll be, have to be on point in every area of my life. So that's what we're going to be learning in this group. It's 100% free to join, but I also have a, a paid course in community that we're starting on Monday. Guys like Elliot Hulse, Trip Advice, uh, million subscribers on YouTube, real big in the, the PUA world. It's going to have so much value in this course. We might do 75 hard. Um, we're just going to get into the best shape of our lives in every aspect. So um, if you want to join us, love to have you. We're looking for men only, if you're a woman, or a man, um, join the Waiting Works community. Uh, that That is for people that are saving sex for marriage or at least trying to, um, which is, it's not easy. But um, that's that's what that community is built for. Ryan said, we are building the kingdom of God. Sadly, many will not make it. We must build with those who will. Amen. Rhonda Weeks. It, for men, yes, Jacqueline. You're saying it isn't adultery if we're married to multiple partners. No. Again, I know you're going to say you're going to hate it. I know you're not going to like it. And I know there's mostly women that follow me. Men are allowed to have multiple wives. That's what the Bible says. It doesn't say women can have multiple husbands. So yes and no to what your question is. Rochelle, Rochelle Greenwood. Yes, Jacqueline Houston. We are talking about good shape. We are talking about spiritual, financial, physical, and waiting for sex, right? All the above. I don't think it's possible to find someone who has endured what you have. You have the anointing. Thank you, Heather. I don't know if it was anointing. 
God's built perseverance in me, and I'm tired. I'm so tired, like, not just physically, like emotionally, just from, it, it was a roller coaster at times. It still is. Todd Smith, what's up? Michelle Perko. I just don't think you could handle the emotions that come with more than one woman. PJ Hart, what's up, BJ? Wait, would this include threesomes? Oh, like, are we all having sex together here? Clarify. I, again, I haven't done this. I will say this is an interesting thing that I read, and, and this is probably even, you know, y'all ain't going to like to hear this because this is really going to challenge you. Every time that the Bible mentions homosexuality, it was always male, male condemned. Never once did God ever mention female, female sex. Never did it condemn it. Didn't even mention it in the Bible. Great article. Go to BereanPatriot.com. Look it up. Look up homosexuality. Now, I know that's going to challenge people's beliefs, and they're going to be like, blasphemy, you're a heretic. <laughs> look it up for yourself. Do the research. I didn't write the article, and I'm not... I'm not advocating anything. I just, it's, it's eye opening to me. It's fascinating. It did Liz Dabowski, but it, it took 50, it, you know, 17 years of marriage with three women, which is 50 collective years of marriage. Nauman Nasir, Sarah Balkley, Rob Garcia. What's up, Rob? Um, I can't make my man feel like, like I can make a man feel like a king by myself. I'm definitely enough to do that. Good. I, I, yeah, I'm not saying again, the minority are going to do this. Dan Senecal. What's up, Dan? Jenna Prezillo. I know my friends, I'm going to probably get my texts are going to blow up after this, but I don't want multiple husbands. I want to share and submit to one man. Great, Jackman. I wasn't even actually saying that you could do that. Um, I'll give it to you. You're brave. I'm here for you, bro. Thanks, Bobby. I'm going to look. Uh, enough people don't like you already, Rob, so who cares exactly? I'm not here to please anybody. I'm here to audience the one. It's what God says. So, again, look look up the scripture. See for yourself. The guy calls himself Berean Patriot. He, that was the first article I read. And if you look in the Bible, how he named himself, he says, he said, the Bereans were more noble than whatever because they, they uh, researched the scriptures to see if these things were true. So what I would say to you is, look, be like a Berean. The Bereans were in the Bible because they looked for themselves to see if these things were true. Don't just sit there in the, you, most people aren't even sitting there in the, in the pews of the church anymore. Let's be honest. They may be watching online if that, but don't just sit there and just swallow everything that's spoon fed to you. Look, research for yourself. Tell me I'm wrong. Shoot holes in it. Or you might get your mind blown like I did. So anyway, that's it, man. I'll talk to you all later. Y'all have a blessed day and a great weekend.